speak about it. In terms of the process mm. of, of filmmaking and how yeah. you get from A, where you have a vision and an idea, yeah. to um, maybe Z, where your film is on like a, a on a big screen. Oh, no. How how does that come about? What sort of um, what sort of um, kind of transitions do you need to go through to get that idea and, and kind of make it a reality? Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, if you've got a team of people that you kind of vibes with, mm. um, at where, whichever, like, that are creatives, mm. um, down to maybe someone that you've met at school yeah. or someone that you're on the road with, whatever. For me, um, it kind of depend. It, it can come from anywhere, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. like whether it's a conversation you've ever heard on a bus or your mum, your dad, yeah. like, stories can come from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. But it's the, the writing process. It's something that I kind of, again, read into. I read books about like filmmaking, the short filmmaking, one's called How to Get Your um, Film Funded, Made and Seen. And in that, there's loads of different chapters about the shorts that have won BAFTAs and blah, blah, blah. And the section that I read was kind of like, look, 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 filmmaking, storytelling is really simple. Mm. You have a person and they have an obstacle. You have a character, they have an obstacle. Do they overcome it? Do they not? And when I when I thought of that, I, I sort of cut this kind of vision of my mum who... Mm was a swimmer but was kind of in a very like you know um, hostile environment her, her, you know she was experiencing really but sort of tri- tribal times with her father and stuff so that's when I sort of drew from that story of her com- having an ambition but being sort of stopped from pursuing it mm. and I took that and I applied it in a story that I wanted to see on screen but I'm not a writer so yeah. I did write a script but it wasn't really that good but I met someone at my university who did write and they wrote it they loved the story and mm. they wrote it then i found a cinematographer i found um a producer all of which were at my school mm. um, production designers production manager um and this and the thing is as you've got your one or two teams it just starts to grow as oh, you yeah, know yeah as soon as you've got your one or two sort of cheerleaders as mm. it were mm. who like your stuff and want to endorse you mm. and like your vision yeah, then it's kind of just a thing where they're well. like oh you need this you yeah. need that you need you need a you need a marketer, you need this, mm. you need that. And it's not even that it's a centered on me. It's just kind of like often it will either start from the writer or the director. Yeah. Who will be at the beginning of the stage of development. Mm. Um and then it just gradually grows and grows and grows and before you know it you've got like thirty eight cast and crew. Yeah. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? That aren't paid because um, mm. it's voluntary mm. and it's, it's learning point, yeah. and it's training. Yeah. So that's kind of with my first film, that was kind of how it started. Where it's coming from somewhere actually quite personal, mm. the story. And now I look at it more as, oh, actually, I just like to explore these themes like mm. or these subjects. And then it kind of grows from less about how to write and how to direct and more about what are the subjects I want to explore mm. and who do I want to explore it with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I feel like the transition is just reading what you understand, but don't take it too literally. Yeah. They might give a few examples of stories in the books. It doesn't have to be like an ex, like an A class, you know, mm. award winning book. <laughs> yeah. Any book on filmmaking will give you I the insight. That. For me, that's how I learn. You can only read your own your own interpretation is the best. Mm. Anyone else's, it's just kind of second hand. Do you know what yeah, I mean? You need your true. own understanding. Mm. So find a way of doing that. Whether it's on YouTube, you've got so many YouTube places that like SBTV, yeah. and there's so many different like outlets Platform, as well. And Film yeah. Riot as well. Film Riot. Yeah. That's another um, YouTube channel that do just talk about basics of lighting set up to storytelling there's so many different places no film school as well there's like loads of different analysis videos they do so it's just about looking into different avenues of how to understand the basics mm. once you've got that it's it's like kind of on from, like off from there, off from there. Off from there yeah. okay so then when you do have your product um yeah. obviously you made reference to um the last leg. Last leg, yeah, 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 yeah. The last leg, which is <coughs> you, um, your your short film, yeah. that one um, was winner at the London Independent Film Festival. That's right, yeah. Okay, cool. So, like, once you have your product, your film, and it's ready to go, yeah. how do you then shop it in these festivals in these places? How do you get your films actually seen mm. and 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 kind of obviously like I know um, quite a few filmmakers off the back of short films have then like had budgets some funding thrown that's at them right. to make even bigger yes. films and that's something that probably a lot of people want to do so then mm-hmm. once you do have that product how do you take it to the world yeah that's a good question i would like to make sure i point out that the short film that i did that last mm. day wasn't just like 
you know, let me go out and shoot. Yeah. That was something that I did at uni. Yeah. I have to emphasize on that because mm. I don't want people to think that I just like got just like <coughs> yeah, my yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, I want to make sure that people <laughs> understand that I went to university and my we had a final major project. By then it was at like the 30th unit. Mm. And this project had to be working with all different people. So mm. I had to like, we had, we had, we had, kit at the school mm. so at the university they provide you with the kit yeah but they do not provide you with the budget mm. to go out and get locations for food transport casting like all of that my producer crowdfunded via indiegogo mm. yeah we raised about 1200 oh, pounds wow. i had to take 600 pounds from my credit card yeah. which amounted to like 1800 pounds to to provide additional costs to like transport, moving kit, location, props. which props, um, which the school, the university didn't provide, mm. but they provided the kit. Mm. So the quality, the production value is hugely important. What mm. you shoot on and who's shooting it mm. is very, very important. You have to select those people. So I actually looked at, at people's work on websites. Yeah. If they're available online, that's great because yeah. it's easier for me. So once I, I found those people, which was about 10 head of departments, um, that's when I, I shot the film and mm. I directed it only yeah. and, did, and, and I casted it as well. Yeah. So and I went on Casting Call Pro to get casting. Yeah. Once you get the film done, there's loads of film festivals. You just, the entries, there are entry fees. Um, some are free, some are not. But again, Google whether you're going to, you know, a web, you know, um, internet cafe or your yard, wherever, yeah. type film festivals, yeah, come up, hand it in, go all out. Yeah, they are. But equally, if you if you know someone that likes marketing, you can just put it up online and get yeah. views YouTube. on that way. Yeah, there's platforms as well, as well. where you're getting yeah. instant exposure. Mm. A lot right now, the film that I did at NFTS, they own it. Yeah. So like, I've got exec producers and people asking me like, what. Like where's the film, mm. and I actually can't show it because mm-hmm. I don't own it. Yeah, own it but yeah. so, it, so the difference is if you're self raising the money, mm. although it is like a killer, mm-hmm. you own the rights. Yeah. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can hand it into wherever you want. Mm. And that film has got me into schemes when I apply for schemes. So there's Spark Scheme, Arts Council. Um, there used to be Ideas Tap, but they're no longer existent. Film London Calling. Um, once they're looking at what you've done before. Even if it is on a 5D, it's not on an Ari Alexa or a Red, yeah. which costs, you know, 15 grand up or, or a 1C100. They're looking at what you've done prior. Yeah. So I started from 1,800 to 4,000 pounds with the Arts Council to seven grand with the National Film and Television School. Oh, wow. And now I'm looking at above 100,000 yeah. and up now. Yeah. So that journey was based on the... F- the beginning of just saying I've got an idea yeah. let me find a man them let me sell the girl yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go let's of go. course it isn't that e- hard that, that easy mm. but I think it's more just researching just your own understanding of stories beginning mm. middle and end what, yeah. what do you think how do you think a story starts does it start in a cafe yeah. does it start at a bus stop yeah. and, and if you ask those questions to yourself everyone else will come and help do the rest yeah absolutely absolutely very insightful and um in terms of the film industry, how do you feel um, it's set up in terms of inclusion? Mm. In terms of, um, is it a very male-dominated industry? Mm. What are the opportunities like for women? What are the opportunities like for, for black women, mm. for black people, mm. for people um, of maybe like um, like working class people? Is mm. it something that you feel is, is easy to get into? What are kind of the certain barriers that you might face? Oh, so it's a... Or see without like um, exposing anyone and, and throwing names under the bus. <laughs> for me, I think what I've understood is that cisgendered white men they do fewer schemes, so okay. they will only need to do maybe two shorts and then they get signed mm. by an agent. Mm. Um, they will get maybe do one short, not even self shoot music videos for a year, yeah. and they'll get a TV show to direct. Oh, wow. But for me, I've done four schemes, mm. so. It's just the, the to pr- validating the, the validation process for mm. me has been a lot longer for women, yeah. um, especially women of color. Mm. But what you what I have not em- put emphasis on is asking for validation from yeah, anyone based on what I Eurocentric ideals of business in yeah. film. I've gone and gone to film networking events. So there's Soul, there's Latimer Talks, mm. um, there is uh, a BFI short film festival, uh, BFI Future Film Festival. 
there's a lot of if you volunteer at festivals, rain dance, I volunteer twice. Mm. You just meet people that are just like, look, we don't, we don't, we don't pay attention to the politics. Mm. We want to know if you've got ideas. I'm not saying go out and shop it for free, but mm. meet people that are their mindset is similar to yours. Yeah. So for me, it's it's just I feel like I like to boil things down. Yeah. And a lot of politics now they're talking about the percentage of this and the percentage of that, and there is that the statistics of how how um non-inclusive it is is there for you for yeah, people to read i don't need to be their statistics journalist mm. <laughs> yeah but from one thing i've noticed is just the schemes the schemes are like you train so you've got great skill set that do training you've got bfi that do training um but some amount to a short film that you can get to make and some mm. is just about self and safety and it's, it depends on what you're wanting to do mm. but all of the schemes i've done have been like short films that I've ended up with yeah. to, that made. So there's Random Acts, Stop mm. Playing Record, recently they've really, you know, shortlisted a lot of, they, that's like more of an experimental um, art, uh, production arm to Channel 4, yeah. and a very short film playback festival. So that was very inclusive. Mm. And I did a, I did the film for them two, year, two years ago. So there are places, there are places that are trying to break that. Um, but I say, I say, do what you need to get done with the schemes, but don't expect them to give you anything yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. You have to look for it yourself yeah. by going to just networking events and mm. not being scared to show your films to mm. people. If it, you know how shit it may be, show them and then get that feedback from those people that you meet at those networking events. Absolutely. It's all about ideas. Yeah. You know I mean, like even if like the execution of it may not be the most professional yeah. or the most clean or whatever, exactly. if you have a That's really right. strong idea, you never know who kind of attaches themselves That's to right. it and wants to help you build that. So essentially, um, if we're getting to the crux of mm. filmmaking or yes. creating films and shorts, yeah. it's really just about ideas, regardless yeah. of like how the execution of yeah. it, as an amateur anyway, yeah. regardless of the execution of it, how clean you think it yeah. looks and, and, and whatnot, it's about the idea and then yeah. taking an idea to places where you can network and yes. you never know who can kind of attach themselves to your idea That's and help right. you make it grow yeah. and, and and kind of we had like a brief conversation about it before we started shooting a mm. book that you're putting together around yeah. ideas can you tell us a bit about that yeah so i noticed that a lot of the time there's so much emphasis on the camera that's used you know mm. um the award winners that you associate with yeah i kind of got frustrated because for me, it's always been about, like we said, the ideas mm. and who who kind of understand what I'm com- where I'm coming from. Mm. I spoke to some writers and they're like, Ella, that, that's gibberish, what, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah. And I spoke to other writers like, yeah, I was thinking that the other day. So mm. it's not about the awards they've won, whoever you collaborate with, it's actually about, or even musicians, like, mm. you know, I've worked with loads of rappers along the way, mm. self-shot a lot of music videos with a lot of rappers on myself, by myself. And mm. it's always been, a, I've always like, really been a believer of yeah just the idea yeah so i've written this book i'm trying to write this book sorry currently mm. called the main in stream is dead and it's catered for young um not young sorry emerging filmmakers that are trying to find a way of getting something onto paper and are finding it hard they're yeah. kind of reaching a writer's block yeah um even if they're not a writer they're directors but they just want to get something down idea to block. show people yeah so this is kind of trying to encourage that but it also talks about ethics and representation um, it talks about the different markets as well. Mm. Um, a lot of the time, they put emphasis on the Eurocentric ideas of if you don't have a white lead or yeah. if you don't have this in Hollywood, yeah. it will not sell. Mm. You know, but actually, I'm trying to write this book to say actually that's not true. Yeah. You know, it's like so many layers to each individual. You can't just base it on that. Mm. So yeah, I think the inspiration of it came from when I watched this um, video on net on Vimeo mm-hmm. called. Um, the it's called understanding a box office failure and um, by daniel netzel and there's a lot of video analysis that have also yeah. made me have my own opinion mm. on stories so watching that it just uh, basically it put hancock and this other film called i can never pronounce it sinochi new york or something like that <laughs> but watch it and you'll know yeah. one sinochi new york was done by the writer of eternal sunshine of the spotless mind who directed that as his debut mm. and hancock as we all know starred will smith yeah so there was, it was an al- analysing, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, I'm quoting from this video of how Hancock was marketed. So because they put maybe 295 million to Hancock and mm. then maybe only 20 million to Sinochi New York, mm. um, when it came to putting bums on seats, they deliberately said, all right, we need to put 
you know, um, Hancock in 2000 theatres yeah. and Snow in York in only 200 theatres. Yeah. So, you know, they're guaranteed, Hancock's guaranteed yeah, to make more amazing. profit yeah, absolutely. because you've put quadruple the amount into the quadruple amount of cinemas yeah. than you did. So I watched that and they said, they said it's actually because of their idea of what niche is. Mm. So Sinochi New York was niche. It was, it was you know, not sellable. It was independent. Yeah. My idea of independent is when you know, a rich, uh, you know, a, a, a person with a rich mummy and daddy can self-fund a feature. Yeah. That's that's what mm-hmm. I understand as independent. Mm-hmm. But something that is niche, it's not just everyday superhero movies. Yeah. So anyway, I wrote, I'm writing this book that's trying to break stigmas about what is mainstream, what is contemporary, you know, and what is alternative. If you like Stormzy, yeah. you like Stormzy. If you like Ed Sheeran, you like Ed Sheeran. No one is better the than other. the other. Mm-hmm. And I'm so, I've sort of come with the idea of talking about that as mm. breaking down markets in three umbrellas, mainstream, alternative, or contemporary, each can be commercial. But what they've done is they've said something like Drake, that's mainstream. Yeah. Um, which they've misinterpreted as saying that's commercial and mm. that's the only thing that can be commercial. Yeah, yeah. Once you've hit mainstream. But for me, mainstream is just exploring the norm. That's yeah. just conventional. Mm. But they've got other artists like Koji Radical yeah. and Denzel himself are very alternative mm. or contemporary, which redef- redefines or rebels against the norm. Exactly. They're not they're not either better than each other. So I've tried to apply that same understanding of what I see the music industry as and applied that to film. Film, yeah. And said anyone could be commercial. Mm. You know, it's just mm-hmm. got to be of a good standard and, yeah. and of a high end good idea. Mm. So that's what the book's kind of saying. That process. It just kind of looks at that process basically and saying, mm. look, if you know someone that likes Solange, you know people that are into really contemporary music and you've got this idea and you love it yourself and then you find yourself making this stuff that is, you know, um, non-chronological and has mm. disequilibriums and has the beginnings at the start. <laughs> the end, yeah, yeah. That's very redefining. That's very, you know, edgy and, yeah, and cutting edgy. And, yes. Uh, so then you just start to think, OK, who likes that? Find those people, talk mm. to them about it. Mm. You know, that's what I've done with my feature film. Mm. I'm using it as a prototype to say, actually, this is how you do it. Exactly. White, black, bl- whoever's the, f- the story, whoever's the lead, it's actually about how I interpret it, you mm. know? Yeah, absolutely. And so like, who are these people that we can go to speak to? Like, mm. where are these places? Mm. Uh, is there any, any that you can kind of point us towards? Yeah, so, oh gosh, I've got loads of shouts out. <laughs> Let's um, go. So, I've got Bounce Cinema, mm. Matthew. I, um, he's got this amazing, I'm going to do it on Monday. Mm. It's actually a lot of black creatives, mm. um, not just filmmakers, that kind of just get together and watch yeah. a bunch of films. Is that actually, regular? Regular, yeah. yeah. And I just did mine in, in June. I screened Last Leg there. Okay. Again, nice. like, sort of like, not Is that, that the one at the rooftop? Place? Yeah, it's a Dalston rooftop. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good networking event. Latimer mm. Talks, Soul Festival, Soul, Soul Film Festival, Add the BFI, Better Shared, Big Film Club, Liberty. Mm. Um, and then the festivals, I've just written a few, like Smalls mm. Film Festival, Aesthetica Film Festival. BFI Future Film Festival, Rain Arts Festival, and Video of the Day, which is online, okay, cool. and Short of the Week, which is online. Okay. Um, those those are basically places that you can either enter your film to get in or uh, screen nights as well. So, mm. And these are all places where I've met people and like at Bounce, I ended up with thirty more contacts. Yeah. Of people, uh, one of them came and assisted me on set who wants to be a doc filmmaker. Sick. You know, on a film yeah. that I just you know uh, on a documentary I was doing. So. Mm. It's just about meeting those people. It's not necessarily going to get you a job, but Latimer Talks, one person that was at Latimer Talks, I screened my film there in 2015. Two, like a year later, I got an email from the, that same person. Mm. That One of the people that was there, she emailed me and said, yo, I liked the film that you did a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing now? Mm. I ended up working at, at, as, a, as a junior editor for with this, um, with this lady mm. for five months, you know, oh, wow. just from screening Screen my film it, at yeah. a networking event, mm. um, which I had to hand it in for. But Latimer yeah. Talks was that, that was that entry. Platform, yeah. So those, there are platforms out there. Um, I try to get as much as I can yeah, together. Cool. I mean, like, if there's uh, if there's any that you did miss, we'll kind of send out a list maybe in yeah. the bio of the video. I've been asked yeah, this so many times that yeah, I have yeah. to keep we'll sure reminding is. myself to create a table of places that I feel like just meet amazing people or yeah. get connections to opportunities. Yeah, yeah, and we'll share that with you guys um, watching back home as well. And, um, yeah, man, I feel like it's been a very, very insightful interview. I'm glad. That, I mean, an insightful chat. I yeah. know that um, one or two people in the house will have, have a question if you want to knock Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank Shoot you so much for coming. No, um, pleasure. It's a very simple question. Just if you could change one thing 
done in the past? Ooh. What would you do and why? Change one thing in general or in, in film? In film, that you've worked on or something you've done in terms of your career? I think I'll do less assistant directing. I did, I didn't, I didn't mention it, but I've mm. assistant directed four short films, which two of them were unpaid. Mm. And just overworking myself to try and prove that I can do this. <laughs> um, one of which is shot, you know, it was 30, 30 page script in four days. Oh. Um, and it, it was just, it's scheduling. So assistant director schedules the day and has to, uh, you know, control times of lunch breaks. And I, that's not me, that's the least creative for me anyway. That I, I didn't, didn't want to do it. So I would say do less of them. Okay, cool. Case, you got one? Um, yeah, what was I going to ask? Um, so to people that is um, shooting music videos yeah. and more on video side, um, how could they build their craft and like get out there as well as just like doing videos for friends and stuff but getting more into the bigger industry? How mm. would they go about that? Um, hmm. Bigger industry? Is it? More like, like where the bigger budget is. More bigger like budget? Bigger and stuff, yeah. Oh, God. Um, well, from the friends that I have, they've done it by actually being passionate about the the music that they're doing it for. Mm. If you're not passionate about the musician that you're working with, it is a waste of time. So with Emmanuel Speaks, I was passionate about his music. So even though it might have not been a big budget, it did lead to, you know, me meeting more people. Yeah, and, strong team. And it actually yeah. having work that I was proud of. So... I think it would be to get into the bigger budgets because I'm not a music I'm not a music video director. It's very specific. Um, I I do film and television. Mm -hmm. Even though I can do music videos, that's not my specialty. But for friends that I know that that is their specialty, they've done one music video for a musician they're proud of. They've ended up doing four, five, and now like one friend of mine, Chris Chucky, he did one music video for Eight Hundred Eight Inc. He just was just come back from New York doing one for Angel. So. That's because he was actually passionate about the, the musician that he was doing it for. So I think it's just attaching yourself to a creative, because as a music video director, you still, your collaborators aren't your producers actually, and more your, the musicians. Yeah. You're, you're, you're actually really, you have to be really close with them. Um, you know, to so start from like, oh, I like Kendrick Lamar, or I like J. Cole, or you know, I like all these other artists. And then find them on SoundCloud, like look for them the ones that you're passionate and just reach out to them. I feel like that's always helped. I, I don't know, because then it just solidifies that relationship and they're always going to mm. know you and be like, yeah, you did that for me. You know, if you're wanting to do music videos like long term, I say that would be a good way. Find a collaborator in music mm. that you like, that you actually like their music. You're, like, you're lit, but no one knows you. And I suppose there are a lot of like, um, like young music video um, videographers that have come up maybe not so young that just in general um, people that have come up they have attached themselves to yeah, particular they artists like yeah. Caleb was doing um, Stormzy yes. and Section yep. and now he's Caleb do you know what I mean yeah. And, and, and yeah man I feel like when you do attach yourself with someone you kind of grow together so yes, when you grow they grow so. when they grow you grow that's right so that's be that thing yeah, yeah be very specific and be very stuck up with who you associate with don't don't just go with any and any person. Mm. Go go with someone that you actually like.